A while ago, I was posed the question, what's the game that really got me into video games? And I had to think about it for a minute. And really, I think it's Kingdom Hearts. When I was about six years old, I was addicted to this channel some of you may know as G4. More specifically, to the show X-Play. It was a video game review and variety show that showed me all the newest games. One day, this glorious crossover game came on screen. It was a mix of Final Fantasy and Disney. At that time, in that moment, I can tell you with great confidence that I wanted nothing more than to play that game. I loved Final Fantasy games from afar, and I watched friends and family play it, but when I was a kid, turn-based games, well, for lack of a better term, turned me off big time. But when I saw Kingdom Hearts was going to take that formula and put it into an action RPG starring Disney characters as well as some of the Final Fantasy methodical spiky hair goodness, I was like, sign me the hell up. So I begged. I pleaded my parents to get me this magnificent game that I saw on the screen. Then the day came. December 25th, 2001, my life would change forever. I opened up my present. There it was. Plus a memory card, because you know I needed that shit for the massive game that I was about to play. We went over to my grandma's house for the rest of the Christmas festivities, but every moment was agony. Until I could get home and play that beautifully mysterious game. Finally, the time had come. Yes! Yes! I got home and booted up my loud ass PS2 and hear an amazing startup sound. Yeah, you know the one. And it booted up to this quiet and somber menu music. I mean, it was really beautiful. Only thing there was art of a boy standing in water with a stick in one hand and adventure in the other. It was really the first video game menu that I thought, man, I wish you could be there. I wish you could just be immersed in the ocean like he was. So I pressed new game and it opened up to a bunch of kids hanging out on an island, devoid of any supervision. Just childlike wonder, fun, and friendship. You're asked these very deep questions, like, what's important to you? What do you want out of life? And what are you afraid of? Questions that honestly hadn't crossed my mind as a young child of six, but followed my every thought there on out. It piqued my childlike wonder of the big picture. What's out there? Why am I here? Who will I become? Who do I want to become? What happens when you die? I tell you what, I'll be damned if I didn't become a little junior philosopher after that. This game about a bunch of spiky haired characters going to different Disney worlds actually made me think about the beauty, sadness, and excitement of life. At an age where I was still pinking my nose, it was fucking mind blown. Up until that point, video games were a mere distraction. Then this comes out, and not only do I have an excellent time, but it changed my thought process on life itself. Given there are many things, such as the melodrama, that are super cringy. Kyrie, Kyrie's inside me? You're stupid! If two people share one, their destinies become intertwined. They'll remain a part of each other's lives, no matter what. Come on, I know you want to try it. What are you talking- <laughs> By 2019, the whole friendship is power thing is nice, I guess, but it's also been so played out. It's just been done by what seems like every anime ever in some way or some form. Yet despite all that, almost 20 years later, I still have such a fondness for this game. And now that I'm older, I'm beginning to look at it with an even deeper eye. See things that I kind of neglected to see when I was a kid. I started relating to characters that I never did when I first played it all those years ago. Like this character, Riku. Surface level, he's just some kid that can be categorized as an emo dweeb, not like myself when I was a teen. However, replaying through all the games the past fall made me realize that Riku had a problem. Since the first game, Darkness and Riku went together like peanut butter and jelly. But with my adult eyes, I saw a kid who didn't think he was good enough. A kid who, on the outside to his friends, was the outgoing one. The dreamer. But still, under all that, felt lesser. 
So what did he do in Kingdom Hearts 1? He fell into darkness, let another being take over his life, and distance itself from his family and his friends. To me, this now screams of my bouts with depression. How the same thing happened to me for years. How I let depression keep me away from what's good in life. So then, and what is probably my least favorite in the series, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, when Riku tries to fight the darkness, he comes to the realization that it's part of him. Instead of trying to get rid of it, he accepts it. He accepts who he is. And it's only then when his true strength reveals itself. That cuts deep for me. It's amazing how still, after all these years, I'm finding deeper meaning in this game series. That I still find life lessons from its storytelling. At a young age, I found out that video games could be art. And that this was definitely one of those games. Games were something more than just to pass the time. Something more than Pac-Man or Tetris. It gives you experiences that you wouldn't necessarily have in real life. Perspectives that you wouldn't necessarily seek out. And really, I think that's why video games are so important in 2019. To the people who they matter to, it helps us get different perspectives, different points of view. To be able to empathize with the human condition. To be able to understand people. Understand where people are coming from. In a time where we're so divided, to be able to bring each other together and relate in some way. And I believe that's truly incredible. I think that's why video games will always be a part of me. Especially this one. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. It really means a lot to me in a time where the news is condemning video games and to just kind of put a nice spotlight and see what good video games can do. If you like this video, please drop me a like. It would help out so much. If you subscribe, I have a few more videos. I've been covered in E3 the past few years and I was trying to do something different. If you could leave us some feedback as to what you liked, what you didn't like, so I can make those incorporations into the next video. And I got a few more videos I want to do in this style. I think I'm going to turn it into a series, but I don't really have a title for it. So we're going to start with this one and see where everything goes. And until next time, have a good one.